We both have our initial necklaces on. Oh, we do. Did you get that from Amazon? I sure did. I sure did. <laughs> I sure did. It's like, um, honestly, well, one of my girlfriends had one and I was like, wow, that's really nice. Like, where'd you get that? She said, Amazon. I said, I didn't know they sold like real looking jewelry. So now I get all my Amazon stuff from there. I, I mean, literally oh just God. did a reel of all the jewelry that I got from Amazon and I'm obsessed. I, it's, all, it's all I've been doing is buying jewelry. Remember that necklace that I sent you? Yeah, I got it. I have yeah, it. Yeah, me too. It's my favorite. But this one actually comes with a smaller chain necklace. I just didn't wear it, but it's so cute together. I have a I said, smaller. Yeah. So this one. This oh one's permanent, so I can't take it off. Oh. That's oh, why that's I, I always permanent. have this one. Oh, like, nice. On, but. I love that. But yeah, shout out to um, Amazon Jewelry if they want to send us some. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> but anyways, I'm a little upset because it's really, it's like been cold outside. Like we got a nice, oh. a nice period of time where it was like mm -hmm. spring mm -hmm. and I was ready. And now I feel yep. like I had to go back into the damn freezer and they're making me like marinate again. And I'm like, no, like I'm ready for spring. I'm not ready for this cold ass weather. So I had to put this damn sweater on today. Uh, yeah, I'm not prepared, truly, because I was standing outside. They had this donut truck at, at uh, Creed School this morning, and they're so good. But I was, like, standing outside waiting, and it was freezing. A donut truck? Oh, my God. You have to try them. They're so good. Like, they just sit in front of the school in the morning? Yeah. It's like, um, I'll send you a picture of it. They're, like, local, and they do, like, events and stuff. And then mm -hmm. they'll, it's like a, like a food truck, but it's homemade donuts. But they're like, what? have you ever had duck donuts? Yeah. They're like that. Like oh super gosh. fresh. They're so good. I'll send That's you a picture terrible. of the little I thing. I could be eating that shit in the morning. <laughs> I was actually, I was going to ask you too. What do you, you don't do like big breakfast in the morning for the kids, right? No. What do you, what do they usually eat in the morning? Because I'm like running out of ideas. Um, Creed's thing for the past like two months has been a banana and a Z bar. Um, okay. Uh, or cereal. Yeah, Ivy loves the little chocolate croissants, so I just get those from the bakery because that's like her favorite thing to eat from Starbucks. So I found them at the bakery, and they're so good. So I just get that when I go food shopping in the bakery aisle. But she just like will either just eat that or cereal, and I'm like, girl, like, bro like broaden your horizons, and she'll eat, she'll eat like fruit or whatever. But I'm just like, I I get so bored in the morning with stuff that I eat, so I'm like, I don't know what else to give to give these kids. Like, well, Isaac doesn't really eat much in the in the morning. He sometimes. ate him. He'll this morning, he ate a banana. Fast. Yeah, he'll take a banana or like an apple or something. But her, she needs to have like a something. pastry or a muffin. Yeah, and I'm just like, I'm, I'm I do like muffins ideas. though. Thanks for that recipe, girlfriend. Oh, uh, did wait? Did you? you I didn't try them yet, but I'm going to. Yeah, Kayla was like asking for these little muffin, the little the little bite muffin. Like God, I, I don't, I don't know if it's a healthier recipe though, because that muffin mix is just like, it's like cake. Like it's I don't not... care if it's healthier. It's that I'm sick of buying the boxes of little bites. I'm oh, sick of it. Okay. I'm sick of seeing the box. I'm sick of opening the box. I'm sick of seeing the little package. I'm sick of it. I'm, I'm sick, sick of, of it. Too. BB, I, BB grabbed a big ass pack the other day, and I was like, "Girl, no! Like I'll just make. Like I have the pack. I have the muffin mixes at home. I'd rather just make, just make them. them. Just make oh, them. Those fucking little bites. <laughs> but all right, let's get into a co-parenting. Okay, go all right. Okay, girlfriend. Okay, so this one says, hello, Kelly and B. First of all, I love and respect both of you so much. I need some advice. I used to work at a prison. It was a good job, but after two years, I left due to it affecting my mental health. Good for you, girl. And the time away from my kids was just too much. I had to work six days a week and only got two days off, 12 to 16 hour shifts. While working there, I met someone who was serving some time because I no longer work there and he is out on parole we are finally together. He has paid his debt to society and is a free man. I love being around him. I am an active overthinker, but when I'm with him, my mind just calms down and I'm at peace. The issue is my ex-husband and father to my two children told me that if I proceed with a relationship with this man, then he will take me to court for primary, if not full custody. I don't think it's fair that he can have so much control over who I see and what I do because I can't do that with his relationships. I love my children more than anything else and I'll push anyone to the side for them. I just don't think it's fair, and I feel like I'm caught between a rock and a hard place. What would you do? Thank you for taking the time to read. Hope you have a good day, and be safe with everything you guys do. Well, for one, we don't know what he did, so it's hard to say yeah. 
Um, in my experience with the court system, there's absolutely nothing that the judge is going to do or say unless that person, felon or not, is a direct threat to the child um, based on his crimes or actions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if he, for example, robbed a bank, I don't know that a child is a target to those actions. And so I, I can't mm -hmm. see a judge saying no, because what happens if you were to start a relationship and get pregnant by this person? Now that's a father to your other children's siblings. So I just yeah. don't think that that's, you know, I don't think that, I don't think that it's going to make a difference. I think it, you have to go by mm -hmm. your gut. And if you don't feel if he's not a danger to your children, he can take you to court and they're not, they're just going to throw it out. They're going to be like, you know. Yeah, this is stupid. Because mm -hmm. doesn't it, it, I feel like I hear a lot of the times, like most of the time the judge will not take away custody or unless it's like super, super, like a really crazy situation. Because yeah. there's been felons, people who have been in jail and like are in and out of jail and still have custody of their kids. Yeah. Um, people who are, you know, into drugs and stuff like that. And they still, some of them still have custody of their kids. So it's like, what this situation would definitely, I don't even think anything would happen. So I wouldn't no. even trip over it. Yeah. Let like, him take you, let do? him, let him pay the court filing fees. And yeah. you know what, as unfortunate as this is, and, and it's irritating to someone like me who pays for legal counsel, mm -hmm. the court system is a lot more lenient with those who do not have counsel. So mm -hmm. let him go file the paperwork, let him pay for that. Let him sit for, you know, six months for a court date. And when you go there, they're going to be more lenient with you because they don't, you don't have an attorney mm -hmm. and they're most likely going to laugh about it. So. Yeah. That's how I feel too. But. Damn. That <clears> sucks <throat> though. It's still the stress of like, you know, Joe and I have gone through it. We still, you know, have our shit, but like just even saying, oh, I'm going to go to court or I'm thinking about going to court or, you know, take me to court, like things like that already give me anxiety. So yeah, it's um, stressful as fuck. Yeah. Like, no one wants to be in court ever. No. Like I don't, no. even if no. for a parking ticket, I don't want to be in fucking court. Like it I is. I feel bad for her though, because it sounds like this is coming from a place of jealousy and not. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. It's not concern. anything that has to do with the children. It he's not actually do, concerned. No, he just wants to, this is what he wants from you. He wants to get like a reaction on it. He wants you to be anxious about it. He wants you to be thinking about it. I don't even think he's going to pull the trigger and like do anything. Yep. I think it's just words that he's just saying, but because he is in his feelings about you still, you know, and I don't know if this is the first person he's seen her like move on right. with or anything, but if that's the case too, it's probably triggering him. So the first thing people are going to do, the first thing he's going to do is like, say something that has to do with the kids because unfortunately that's the one thing that's gonna it scares us you know yeah yeah no i get that speaking of co-parenting um with toxic exes okay kim kardashian and kanye west were spotted together where kanye west's new wife actually was for his listening party mm-hmm and I did not read anything about maybe, wait, it says, okay, so the kids were there. So I yeah. feel like that's good for the kids to see parents interacting together um, in a civil way. But also, what do you think about, because Kanye has kind of been all crazy. Over the place. <laughs> so, so how do you, because I feel like it says a lot about Kim's character that she's still able to be around him and support Bro. him. And because if this was me, if I was in Kim Kardashian's position, position, mm -hmm. that would be a situation where I don't even think that I would want to not saying mm -hmm. that I wouldn't, but I don't think I would want to get along. I would just keep my distance unless it were mm -hmm. directly speaking about the children. Like I wouldn't even want to show the kids that we're getting along. It's just like we communicate civilly and that's it. I'm not showing up for, your events i'm not showing yeah. up for your albums mm -hmm. i'm not showing up in that way i'm mm -hmm. showing up for my kids only in communications yeah no i i 100 agree with that and i feel like kim is a different she's like breed. a different type of breed i swear she's a different type of woman because the stuff that i see her do sometimes i'm like you have to have so much self-control <laughs> like literally because the shit that she's still after everything that, you know, that goes on with them on the internet and the rumors and the shit that he tells tells her and says to her and posts about her, 
she still gives this man so much grace. Like she will still show up for him. But I think this uh, specific thing that they were at, if I'm not mistaken, I think North was there too performing because she has a song with Kanye now. Oh, like, and she announced an album, I think. Yeah. So now she's like in the music scene. So I think that's another reason why Kim is like, you know how she is with her children. Like she's always, she's going to be involved in any way when it comes to her kids. So I think she was mostly probably just supporting North than she was okay. Kanye. Okay. Um, but I must, I'm also, I have to look at this though, because I'm not sure if this was the exact thing, but um, I know he has been proponing, promoting this new album and that's the one she's on. So I'm assuming, but there's, uh, I've seen the stepmom with North and like the kids and stuff like hanging out and like being You like, have? Yeah, I've seen pictures of her like hanging out with North and apparently they have like a really good relationship and stuff. This is just stuff that I read, like North, yeah. stuff, they're good. Um, but you know, you also see the other side of it. Like, I don't know, I feel Kim and Kanye is all, it's always like been Kim and Kanye for me. So it's it's so weird for me to even grasp the fact, the fact that he's married again, right? I like, didn't believe it. it weird? Remember I didn't believe it at first either. Yeah. Because I feel like it happened so fast. It seemed to us that it happened so fast between Kim, Julia Fox, and then this woman. Yeah. It so I didn't even know so what fast. to believe. Yeah. But apparently she was like a designer or something for Yeezy or she's like an architectural design. Oh. I don't I don't know exactly what she does, but she worked like for Yeezy. Um, that's what I read. But so he probably, I'm sure he knew her before. Like she's not some totally random woman. Like he knew okay. her. Right. But I do feel like it did happen. Like super, Like I didn't think... I was going to see any of them move on for so long because he was there. He was still, even when he was with her, he was still talking about Kim and stuff. It was just right. so weird. You know, like, I feel like they're always going to have this, I don't know, this like connection between them. Like they were it like I'm Kanye and Kim were like the it couple for so long. So do you it, think we'll ever get back so together? Weird. I don't, I think they're, I think they're like so far gone by now. Like it would have to take, he would have to like really go back to like the old, because J Lo got back with um, Ben Affleck, so I feel yeah, like they're it's like possible. <laughs> That's so true. I don't know if he like cleaned up his act and was acting the way he used to with her. Like, I think he just changed so much over time, mm -hmm. and like that kind of change over that short period of time is so scary to see in somebody. Yeah. But there's also a lot of mental health issues related and stuff. So we only we don't even know half of like what she's probably been through with him. You know, so I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But it seems like she's moved on. Like she isn't she dating what's his name now? OBJ, Odell yeah. Beckham Jr. See, but I don't know because I've seen all kinds of stuff with like him and Chloe, and then like mm -hmm. allegedly Chloe gave the blessing for Kim to date him. I've also heard rumors now, please don't crucify me for this, that you know, allegedly he was linked to like a guy, and then other mm -hmm. things were saying that like his little baby is like one or two years old, and don't mess with someone that has a baby who's on who's under two because oh they're still God. messing with their baby mom. Uh -huh. So I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know, but she. I think she just wants like a boy toy. Like I don't think she's looking for like a relationship with these men. You I don't know? know, she's like, a Kim lover girl. She needs. I maybe this is an unpopular opinion, but I've been waiting for her and Drake. Like. Why are you not with Drake? Ugh, I can't. I know. I, I'd rather her be with someone who's like. But he's a lover boy and she's a lover girl. I don't know. I love Drake. So I, I can't. Like, I can't I don't even. Like, him like that. Like, I don't know. I feel like in a relationship kind of way, I feel like she would deserve better. Like, I don't think he's a relationship kind of guy. Really? Yeah. He's such a, like, I don't know. There's just something about him that I just feel like he's, I don't know. It's weird. I don't know. I'm I, kind of I want to see her, her with like a really big, like someone in like who's like a huge plastic surgeon like or like a, a, a real like a estate mogul or something like yeah someone Lawyer. who's like not really in like the entertainment space but someone who makes bank and like can take care someone of her and a still, little bit under the radar like still makes yeah. a lot of money on her level but just not in the public mm -hmm. eye necessarily like, i think that's what she needs i feel like if her and drake got together, it would be it would just be like a shit storm of the same thing will happen, I think, with her and Kanye. Like, it's going to be too much for them. Okay. Fair, 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 fair. But fair. I do, I, I, I don't know. We all said that everyone wanted Drake and Rihanna to get together, too, at some point, And he fucked that up, like, royally. See, I, don't, I can't picture that. <laughs> yeah, they were, like, fucking around and everything. There was, like, a rumor, too, that he was, like, fucking around with J-Lo at some point. Like, he's been through it all, girl. <laughs>
why I don't know what rock I was living under, but I did not hear about yes. any of that. So I you can't have to Google it. There's pictures and everything. Like he's been he's just been around, you know. Drake. <laughs> <laughs> I can't with him. But I'm back to like her and the girl. I don't know. I I don't think the relationship is like anything that's like they're not like hanging out and shit like that. And they they're just doing it and just do just being they have to be together at some point like around each other for the kids and stuff, especially if she's, if she's showing up to all of his album listening parties and things like that. Like, of course, Kim's going to be there for North. So I think, right, just right, keeping, right. I think they're just keeping the peace and stuff. Cause I've never even seen them have a conversation or like anything. Like they're just, that's it. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll be keeping my eye out because I want to see if there's like, because Kim also owns a part of Yeezy. So mm -hmm. I would be curious to know if Bianca still works for Yeezy and if they have interactions or if they get into it further on like the show or something. I don't know. Well, the show has been so ass lately. They don't even show any drama or anything. Like it's, I haven't even watched the last season. Oh, like I feel like it's so boring. Have you watched it at all? No. There's no drama like there's no it's just boring like they don't really show anything like they show when they're going places for like events like they showed things but like we that. see that in we see that on the internet the show yeah. has to be something that anything that anyone you know has a show about has to be something that is not even just an extension an extension of instagram or like an extension mm -hmm. of what you see in the media it has to be something that people are interested in they're invested in they want to keep watching when you're just literally showing what you show on instagram or what the tabloids are writing yeah. people lose interest pretty quickly so yeah. that's kind of disappointing because it's like why would i watch this show when i can just scroll through your watch it for free on shit. tiktok and yeah instagram. exactly like you're giving me the same damn if there's no if there's like no substance to it like it's just boring you know but I mean I think they were, I feel like they were so open at some point before and like I don't know maybe they got over it and maybe they didn't want to do it anymore when they wanted to go another route which I totally I understand that but it's like you're also the Kardashians like people read about this stuff on the internet and they read about this just so then when they do watch the show they expect to see those things you know so I think there, that was what was happening like a lot of the stuff that we saw we didn't see any much more of it on the show or like they don't, they just, it, I don't know. It was just, it did not grab my attention at all. Like these past few seasons, I just haven't been able to watch. I don't You like look it. like you could be related to the Kardashians, truly. Who? Cool. You. Me? Yeah. Oh, hell no. I think Why? I They're so pretty. Yeah, but I don't think I look anything like similar to them. I feel like you have like the curves that Kylie has. Like you have, and it's like, because Kylie oh, doesn't to me. So. <laughs> no, okay, fair, 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 fair. Because mm. I feel like the Kardashian bodies, we already know, but um, mm -hmm. like the Jenner, um, mm -hmm. Kylie, to me, doesn't, whether she's had plastic surgery or not is not my business. Yeah. But she still looks she, good. to me, like you kind of have the same like natural curves and like your hair. I don't know. I just feel like you would fit in with like, if you told me you were their cousin, I'd be like, oh, okay, I see it. Oh, I see it. Well, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Just like the Latina Kardashian around here, you know. <laughs> Don't be hyping me up, Kale. No, but that's, you know, I get a lot. I get um, Eva Longoria a lot. Oh, I can see that. And I, I don't I, see that at all. Like, I feel like people tell me I look like people all the time. And I, my main thing that I think about in my head is, do y'all really know what I look like? Because I, I feel like if people tell me. <laughs> I swear people tell me all the time they'll be like you look like this person this person and I, there has not been like one person that I think I look like and I don't know maybe you look because up Eva. you know I, I can see that yeah I, I, I've i looked at her pictures and stuff and I'm like I, I love her she's freaking gorgeous but I can't you don't see that no I don't see that at all <gasps> and I don't maybe it's because you know sister. how like obviously the way other people see me I'm never gonna see my like we have different perspectives of each other like the way you look at me and the way I look at you, we're never going to as ourselves see. It's like looking into a mirror. You know how it's a little, di not distorted, but it's different. Like it's yeah, not. Yeah. So the, the way people see me, I'm never going to understand why they see Eva Longoria or something. I actually take back the gender. I mean, your body you reminds me of like, your body you think, now you think it's Kylie, Eva Longoria. <laughs> but your face reminds, wow, that's almost like uncanny. Are you serious? I do not see it at all. I swear to God. Like I do not see it. Maybe it's, maybe it's related like in a cousin way or something. No, I don't see like, no. us looking like alike. You look more like Eva Longoria than you look like your own sister. 
what are you serious maybe i should do like a tiktok where i do i pick one of her makeup looks and like do it and see if i look like like her please do because that is almost and i have never that's the one i've never gotten someone more in my life than i have her people literally comment that to me all the time they'll dm me about it and everything and i'm just like i don't see it like i do not fucking see it wow but I've I mean, some weird shit. It's, it's a compliment. She's stunning. You're stunning. Yeah, I mean, no, I said not... that when I tell people I don't think I do. Like, I'm like, I'm not being rude. Like, I I love her. Like, I think yeah, she's yeah, gorgeous, yeah. but I just physically don't, I can't see it. Like, it's just okay. I see, what, I see what you're saying. Yeah, no, I get it. It's still, I... it's still a compliment. It's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, she's really pretty. I think it's this, this picture, the way that you're sitting right now, and this specific picture. I'm going to send it to you, but that crazy. is so funny. It's so weird. Like, I feel like. I always think about this all the time, like the way people see you, like we're never going to see ourselves like that. Right. Yeah. No, I, I, I understand that. And that drives me crazy. Like I want to see how other people see me, like in their eyes. I'm sending this to the group. <laughs> she said I'm sending this to the group. <laughs> Stop. We got to get like a good, ce- who's like your celebrity look like? None. I'm trying to think. I have none. Maybe Julia Stiles. Hmm, that's interesting. Has people has someone told you you look like Julia Stiles? No, they um. There was like this old, old, old Teen Mom thing. Uh-huh. And they were like, if you could cast someone in a movie to play Kale, who would you pick? And two people picked Julia Stiles. So that's Julia, why I that say is... that. But I don't think we don't, we don't look alike. No. That She's no, way I think that I think that fits though. Like she kind of gives me you vibes a little bit it was just weird because like i don't even think a lot of people know who julia styles is because she kind of fell off the radar a little bit yeah. so when two people and this was years ago i yes. want to say it was either chelsea and leah or leah and somebody else both said julia styles and i was That's like funny okay. and, don't, and you like like her you like you I love her you love her right like mm-hmm. i remember you talking about that that's so funny i can't think of any i can't think oh, of let any. me know if, who y'all think i look alike look yeah like. we need to find like a kill look alike and then we have to do our we have to like find a picture of them and like see if <laughs> we can um yes yeah. like see if we can match to look really like to really look like them that would be okay so deal funny. we'll do that <laughs> <laughs> but anyways back to i have a topic and i saw this um the other day and i thought it was interesting and i really want to bring it up because okay I wanted to ask you, because I, I feel like we, I don't know about you, but I have, I only had like mom friends once I like moved to Delaware, obviously because I ended up becoming a mom, whatever, but I met, a, I've met a shit ton of women out here who okay. are moms and in general, and there's just some that I connect with and then some that I like just never did, or maybe we just fell off, like we didn't you know, form like a real genuine friendship or anything. So I wanted to ask, uh, what traits do you like consider truly necessary to be a good mom friend? Like what is a good trait that you think makes you a good mom friend or someone that you, some things that you look for in other people? And then what are some deal breakers? Do you, Give me some I, examples. And I, have, and I have some examples too. So I'll okay. give you some examples because I saw, um, these are some of the ones that I feel like so one that is a, uh, I'll start with my deal breaker. Cause this is actually a true story. Like this happens to me, this has happened to me on multiple occasions. So I understand that, you know, when you make plans with someone and you know, they flake or sometimes they can't come through, especially when you have kids, I 100% I've been there, you get sick or things happen. I get it. But when it happens, cons- when it happens consistently, like change plans, change plans, change plans all the time. To the point where my kid knows that we're, you know, going to have a play day or something. And then I always have to take it back, take it back or like disappoint them. That kind of, I've had a friend like that. And I kind of had to distance myself from her because number one, like my time is very valuable to me. Like I don't give up just time for my many people, like just being honest. And I was putting away time, time, time all the time for her. And then, you know, she kind of wasn't reciprocating back. Like she would always flake out or, you know, she'd make plans with me. And then literally, like, I remember one time I was at Target buying stuff for us to hang out that day, like with the kids and stuff like food. And I was already checked out. And then she texted me and was like, oh, I can't make it. So it's like shit like that, like really that pissed me off. And I was just like, this is like the 10th, like this happens all the time. So that's something that is a deal breaker for me. And it's like, I try and be understanding like the first, first or second time. But if it's consistent, like, I kind of feel like that's your character. Like you're probably doing this to other people too. And I just didn't want any parts of it. So we're like, a, so we're, like, we're cool, but we just don't hang out like that. Um, so that was kind of something that I was like, 
I don't think it makes her like a bad friend, but for me, it was just something that's like not, that's a deal breaker for me. Cause number one, like, and that's another reason why sometimes I don't even tell the kids if people are coming over or if we're having a play date, because like that triggered me. Like I was like, I'm scared. Like someone's going to back out and then they're going to be disappointed or something. So now I don't even say shit until like the hour of like, or the person's like, I'm on my way. (laughs) No, but that makes sense. I think just cause I just had a situation like that. It didn't happen like a bunch of times, but like this one play date that we were trying to schedule, we had to keep rescheduling. And it was, it was my fault because I kept like, Oh, I forgot like this sport started today or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, but that was like one time out of like all the time. So like that doesn't, I completely understand that hasn't happened to me, thankfully Mm -hmm. um, that I can think of, but that would really piss me off, especially because like, I don't know, yesterday I posted about like my days, right? Like, and I'm not, everyone's are like this, but maybe not everyone's are like this with sports, but maybe with other things. Like for you, for example, you have a shit, you have shit going on. Right. Mm -hmm. But like I have three kids in sports and sometimes like today, three kids are in sports today. Yeah. So I, and they're at different times. So like, I don't, if I make time for you during like from March to June, mm-hmm. that's, you know, that would piss me off if that was yeah. you, like, especially yeah. during this season. So it's like, I'm not, no, I'm not okay with that. I will say like, I did start getting um, to a point where I was always having people come to my house and people mm-hmm. weren't inviting me, like me and my kids to their house. Yep. So, I got to that. I'm, I'm, I've been there too. Like I've still, that's something that I've also struggled with, with yeah. that specific person as well. Like we would invite them over and you know, like I'm very like open. I'm like, let's schedule crafts for the kids. Like I'd go out and like get stuff and like do stuff for the kids, but it never was reciprocated. So I guess like the reciprocation of it is like, if I see like, if I'm going old board for like a friendship and like trying to hang out with you and I feel like it's not even mildly being returned, then yeah, it kind of like pushes me away. And it's like, well, I guess I'm not the friend that I thought I was, you know, to you. Makes you, you're basically like feel gaslit because you're like, yeah. am I, am I the problem here? Like, no, I, don't I know. swear. Oh my God. I swear to God. That's exactly how I felt. And I remember having this conversation with one of my friends and I was like, I thought we were really fucking cool. Like I thought me and this person were like really fucking close. Like we had such a genuine friendship. And I was like, was this one, like, did I make this shit up in my head? And she was like, no, like, I swear, like, she's like, you, like everyone saw that you guys were really good friends. So I don't know like what really happened. And I was just like, did I do something? Like I kind of gaslit myself into thinking that too. And I was like, like, I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything, but I feel like I'm a good friend. Like I know, like, I'm genuine to the people that are genuine to me who are my friends. Like I make the time for the people who make time for me. Like I'm there for you. You're there for me, you know, like, and I feel like I'm a really good friend. And I was just like, kind of, that was the first time that ever happened to me. So I was just like, what the fuck? Like, I I just felt really fucking gaslit. Like it was really weird. I don't even know how to explain it, but I, when it was really sad, cause I was like, I felt like I was forming this genuine friendship with someone, but they didn't feel the same way. Or maybe they just didn't want to put the effort into have a, having a friendship with me. So oh, I was just so- kind of like, well, damn. <laughs> well, because you're like, what is this you or is it like our situation? Because that's the other yeah. thing. It's like kind of just in the whole like friendship realm. Yeah. Like all the fallouts I've had. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I feel gaslit because obviously I'm the common denominator, but also they're so unique that I'm like, am I the problem? Or is this just like a very by situation? Because like, you get what I mean? That was kind of like a deal breaker for me. I was like, okay, I guess this is just not going to be what I thought it was going to be. Another one is like someone who I think we've, we've talked about this often too. someone who's like, oh, I would never, or like someone who makes me feel like I'm a shitty person for doing certain things for like, Cause we talk about it all the time. Like I, I practice gentle parenting, but I'm also very spicy. So it's like, I'm not a full, I'm not fully gentle parenting yet. Like I'm not yeah. fully there. I try to be, I try my fucking best, but I'm just a spicy parent, you know? And I need someone, I need like those moms who are a little sarcastic, who have dark humor. Like I need someone who just gets it. And it's like, yeah, you love your kids to death and we would do fucking anything for them. But also it's like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? You know, like, (laughs) no, I get that. I, um, yeah, I like the little, the spicy parenting. Yeah. I scrunchy mom is like, 
What are those names? Like what? Because I hear that all the time, like scrunchy mom or what is it? Crunchy. Like almond mom. What do those mean? Because I have no idea. Crunchy what is mean. like you're a little bit organic with a little, basically with like a little bit of spice. So like scrunchy mm -hmm. might be like, you're not going to do no screen time at all, but you might do like an hour of screen time kind of thing. Or like you okay. might go mostly organic, but they can have a donut sometimes. Like shit like that. Um, and then there's crunchy that's like all the way, like holistic at all times. And then we might oh, no. coin a new term here. Like spunky is like what you like spicy, crunchy, spunky spicy, yeah. gentle, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like something like that. I don't so feel like I'm like a crunchy mom. Like I, I, you can have screen, like the limit on our screen time is like two hours, but sometimes it's like, if you go over, maybe I'll give you an extra hour. Like I'm very lenient sometimes, especially if they've got their shit done, like yeah. their work and chores, whatever. But I also like, if you want your snacks, you can have a snack. Like I'm not going to limit you to a donut. I'm probably going to have five donuts. Like <laughs> we can just eat donuts together. Like, I don't know. It's just, but, but also I want you to eat your fruit with a donut, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like maybe have a strawberry after that. Like <laughs> you're like balance, like balance it out a little bit. Yeah. I saw this post the other day too. And I actually did want to bring this up to you and I didn't write it in the doc, but I screenshotted it. And it was about this, this guy saying like, he doesn't understand parents who um, don't want to put their kids in like travel sports and stuff because it takes away from family time. Like he was like, I don't understand. Like, why wouldn't you want your kids to like go out and do sports and like have all this stuff? And I was like, I get it. Like, I, I want to put Vivi in travel cheer. Like, that's something that I really want to do. And I've said like, whether anyone, whether Joe comes or not, like, I still want to do this with her and I want her to do it. Um, but it's, it's been about like the finding the time. Because, mm -hmm. la I mean, we, when we just moved into the house, I, we couldn't do it last year because it was too much going on. And I didn't want to, I knew I couldn't dedicate that time and I didn't want to take away from her, mm -hmm. but I want to do it this coming year, you know? But also I do see the sides of like the people who are in travel cheer and stuff, they're gone every weekend. Like it's all the time. Like they can't attend birthday parties or they can't see their family members and things like that. So it's like maybe for them, that's something that they don't really want. Like they do want to see their family still and still want to have like a life outside of sports. But then there's also people who don't mind it. Like who cares? You know, like this is like, for me, it's like, it's fun. I love, I could do cheer every weekend. Like, I don't care. You know, like I love it so much and it's fun for us. But I was like, I don't, I feel like you shouldn't like judge the people who do maybe put the family time or like their, maybe that's the only time they all get to spend together. Like, above that like it doesn't make one yeah. wrong or right you know I don't know I have a very different outlook on like sports and activities and we're putting a lot of emphasis on sports but it doesn't yeah. have to be sports it can be traveling debate team chess team you know yeah, like that, just, just whatever like whatever that, that the kids are involved in yeah that, like maybe takes away from the weekend the lake trip or something right. you know like things like that and he's like I don't understand why people you know think that that's taking away from something like they're gaining so much from sports and I'm like I totally get that but we can't put expectations on other people either like maybe yeah going but to that's that lake where house means something to them you know like, I like, get, you can't get that I'm big for like so Lincoln plays travel basketball and yeah. the season only is from March to March to June mm -hmm. tryouts are this week for fall travel soccer yeah Javi and I last summer and this summer have made the you know decision together that we take summers off we're not doing sports in the summer anymore because mm -hmm. during the school year we're kind of already busy and there's school and you know it is what it is um we want to be able to do all family stuff in the summer and that yeah. was something that we came to together and um i also don't understand like and again, maybe tone deaf, but like whatever it is, whether it's sports, activities, debate, chess, whatever the fuck your kids are in. Yeah. When people say no to their kids doing activities, whether it's travel or not, I do have a problem with that. And mm -hmm. if you are arguing that you can't afford it, to me, there are so many like fundraisers, fundraisers that you can do. Mm -hmm. uh, you're taking away from your kid's childhood. I wholeheartedly believe that. And they didn't ask to be here and you should be doing it because there was a whole discussion on one of the Facebook pages about like they're I guess they're disagreeing with me or just in general, like about sports and activities and things, but mm -hmm. you gain so much from the activity that to, like summer camps, 
Yeah. Um, there's a sleepaway camp that's for two weeks in my hometown. And I'm like, to me, what they would gain from that and like the money will, uh, I'll see more money at some point, you know? Mm-hmm. And I, there's just so much to me that I'm like, I don't know how cheer is. So cheer is new for me. I don't know if that's like all it's year. Very, if you can just yes, travel. All year. Like, she, oh, see, that she, would so be she, different. If she's, in, if she's in the travel time, she has more practices added to the week on top of her tumbling practices that she has. And then it's like an every weekend they're going to Virginia, like they're in Maryland, they're in Florida, like it's constant travel, like all but I know for, adults, for a good period of time. Like, I think it's like a couple months, but then she, she's still in it year round though. I know adults that are, that did competitive cheerleading their whole lives. And that is something that they will never forget. It's a part of who they yeah. are. Mm-hmm. They love it. I mean, I can think of three or four of them off the top of my head. And that is like, they eat, sleep, breathe, mm-hmm. cheerleading, like That's their whole lives. <laughs> and, you know, and, but they wouldn't have changed it for the world. So to yeah. me, I'm like, those experiences are worth it. And I just feel like if you know, like for Lincoln, for example, he has to play soccer all year. If he's going to play travel ball, he has to play all year to be conditioned in order to ma- be good enough to make the travel team. Same yeah. for basketball. That's something that he has to train for all year. So there's no mm-hmm. days off in the off season, but we're not going to join a team or be on a travel in a travel league during the summer months. So from June to yeah. the end of August, there's no sports unless it's like around the house. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I do feel like there's, well, a, good there's a way to balance and make it work. But I do think that you're doing yourself a huge disservice. You're doing your kids a disservice because, I mean, my kids have met some of their best friends and they've mm-hmm. had great experiences. And yeah, by midseason, Lux, because he's six, might say, oh, I don't want to play anymore. Yeah. But by the next sign up for the next year, he wants to play again. So it's just one of those things that I'm like, I don't know. I feel like do I feel like I'm travel. on both sides of it because I, I do value so much like the having something to like outside of the cheer and like just that I didn't want I don't want to make it like her whole life or like put all that pressure on and I'm also I'm just like a family person like if my mom or like my sister they invite me somewhere for the weekend or we're have like a family thing like I don't want to miss out on that you know like so for me it's also like damn like she gets to see her cousins and like her family. Or is it cheer, you know? So I kind of think I'm like, I'm stuck with like what the guy said, like in the middle, because as much as I do value like seeing family and like, I think that is just as important and stuff. Like maybe those family trips or, you know, not missing out on those things. But then it's also like, if I make a commitment to cheer, I'm going to value that commitment for VB, you know? And like, we'll just have to plan some time around. Well, so Javi and I, if this is helpful at all, or if anyone is listening, the way that Javi and I laid out this year was during the school like from september to june Mm -hmm. we had whatever we were going to do planned out already so like whatever vacations that he's going on whatever vacations we're going on are planned out during the school year because we take the summer months off so it wouldn't matter Mm -hmm. he uh, he already knew every single trip that lincoln was not going to be able to attend the practices or those games right like he knew on my end and i know on his end Mm -hmm. so that has been such a game changer and like even when we got the basketball schedule he's like okay I'm gonna rearrange this to make sure that Lincoln can either be here or not be here he's gonna miss this one so that's also helpful too like so if you're looking at something that's all year round or for like a majority of the year and you want to be able to schedule things out like yeah that's something that you plan in advance and you're like okay we can't if we're gonna commit to you know year-round cheer or year-round whatever it is these are the there's a fly in here. That's I know really it's fun. like all around you. <laughs> oh, disgusting. Um, it, you know, knowing that, okay, these are the weeks that we're going to be away and letting those teams know so far in advance. So they yeah. know to schedule things or plan things or coordinate things, not choreograph. That's what I meant. Chor- yeah. Choreograph things a certain where, way where Vivi's not going to be there for that week. And it's like, mm-hmm. Those types of things are really helpful or have been to me and Javi when it comes to this. And I mean, he mm-hmm. even said to me, um, you know, when one of our trips kind of was wonky and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to put this trip in the summertime. Don't even worry about it. We'll figure it out. And it was just a game changer for us to like have everything planned out for the school months because we also knew that, I mean, he's got other kids. I have other kids and mm-hmm. that has kind of helped us. Yeah, I get. Yeah, I guess I'll have to just start doing stuff like that but it's also hard because I feel like things just pop up around like my family well, they're not like planners like that like they'll just be like hey this weekend something's going on or like it, it just things just pop up so it's like always just like either I miss it or I can go like that's it like that's yeah. just how it is 
But as far as vacations and stuff like that, I think that is that is something that I will. I don't even know. I I don't know how the travel team is virtually like if they have like the summer because I know competition um, time is only like a certain amount of time. Like it's not the full year, but then they're all, like the rest of the year they're just training and like doing, you know, co- practicing choreo and stuff like that. Um, but I think for the majority of the summer, they kind of have like a good time off. I just have yeah. to figure out when that would be. <laughs> yeah. Cause summer, having the summer months off has been really nice. Cause I like, we've yeah, already, planned, I love like... the summer. I like to do things like, yeah. even if it's just a small weekend stuff with them, like I love the summer. Like I just want them to enjoy the summer as well. Yeah. So that's like yeah. super important to me, but I feel like, I feel like we got super off topic of that, but um. <clears throat> Back to like the whole mom friend thing. Some of the ones that I really, that I I like and like that I um almost like admire in like a mom friend. Like I love when someone is able to like vent to me. Like I, and the same for me. Like I want to be able to like vent to you about like my kids or my husband, or whatever, without you like looking at him a, a different way. Like I'm just venting. Like I'm just like, I just, sometimes I need to just say what the fuck I have to say. And that's it. We laugh about it. We move on. Like, I don't yeah. need you judging a mar- like anything, like nobody's yeah. perfect shit happens. But I, I feel like I truly do have those friends where it's like, we can say stupid shit to each other. And it's like, God, he fucking pissed me off this day. And it's like, none of us hate or look at our, our husbands a, a different way or anything. Yeah. Like it just is what it is. Um, so I love people like that. And I feel like I do. One of my first friends that I got that, in Delaware she's like that and I adore her and she's much older than she's like 10 years older than me mm-hmm. and she was one of my first friends out here and I don't know if it is because the age and the maturity and she's like been through it like she's been married and stuff so it's like I feel like I can just tell her things and she's just yep. like oh girl been there like it's fine like it'll you just do this or whatever and I'm just like okay <laughs> so I love that um and also and then someone said someone also says someone who shows up for you And it's like, they, like, like we were talking about before, like not only you're making the effort, but they're making the effort. Like they invite you out. Like, um, it's not so one-sided. And I feel like that's something that I've struggled with in a lot of my friendships and like just relationships in general. Like sometimes things are super one-sided and where I feel like it's just me. And I'm like, damn, like, why don't people show up for me the way like I show up for them? So that's something that's like, I appreciate that. in like a friend when I see it being reciprocated. I have a friend that I wish I could make more time for, but I literally, like, I haven't hung out with anyone in so long because I don't, I genuinely don't have the time. And it's, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, we make time for what we want to make time for, but like, there literally isn't. Like, sometimes there is none. Yeah. I, with seven kids and the way that sports are right now, like my free time goes to that. And so from March to June, I'm essentially unavailable. And, you know, and I feel bad because I'm like, I don't ever want her to think that like, I don't think about her or whatever. And so it's just one of those things where it's like, adulting is so weird because there are certain Mm -hmm. things that you're like, okay, you make time for what you want to make time for, but you have one kid, I have seven. So I can't, it's not the same. It's not as the same me. type of balance for you that it's it can't. I mm-hmm. I can't say like yeah. I'll make time where I because um our I hate calling him our tenant because he's our friend, but it's also yeah. Elijah's cousin. He was like, "Hey, um, we're changing plans for this weekend that we have. Do you want these comedy show tickets?" And I was mm-hmm. like, "I I don't know, right?" So he stopped me in the driveway when I was coming down. He's like, do you want these? And I was like, I don't know. Like I, we would have to find a babysitter. We would have to get a hotel. Like you yeah. would have to do all of these things. Right. Mm-hmm. It is not the same as just asking someone that has one kid to be like, you know, we have three kids that we need, would need to get a babysitter for. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, it's a lot. And so I don't ever want people to think that like, you know, I, I don't value them or I don't want their friendship. Cause I do. I try, but like, I haven't seen Kristen, you know, I haven't seen her. I was just at the airport with her when I missed my flight, but I never saw her face to face. I never, Mm. she was already at the gate. I never, I missed my flight. I didn't get to see her. And we went on. You never got to go. No, I missed my flight and they didn't have any more flights that night until the following. I think I would have landed at like midnight, but I had to be there to film at 9 PM. So I, it was like, there's no point. Yeah, no, I get that. And it's so, it's so hard. And I also, I, I get it too. And I'm like, even me with one kid, sometimes it's hard. Like if someone invites me all like super sudden, I don't have, I like, I can't, 
sometimes I can't arrange that either. Like I would have to call Janet, see if she's down here for the weekend to babysit. And then I have to schedule for the dogs. And a lot of the times my dogs can't get babysat because Gracie has epilepsy. So I can't take her to a kennel. Like it's like, it's a lot of shit that like I have to pre-plan before I do something for like mm-hmm. a weekend or like even if, if I had got tickets to like a show or something like that, you know? And I think people don't really think about like the pre-planning stuff that goes into it when you have a million other things going on. <laughs> Yeah. And that's like the main thing. Like this weekend, I we were invited to a dinner and it's actually the girls dinner that I was talking about before. Um, and I really wanted to go. But um, the babysitter that I originally had, like me and my other friend were supposed to come and she, I, I was like, all right, like I'll get the babysitter for like both our kids, whatever. Babysitter is not going to be able to babysit. So I was like, it's either me and you go or like, and Joe stays behind. Or I was like, honestly, if Joe wants to go, like he can go. Like, I don't care. Like, we just have to figure out who's going to go. I feel bad because I already said yes. So I'm like, either one of us go, like, I think Joe's probably going to be like, you guys go. Like, I don't really care. But other than that, it's like, I, I, I also feel bad if I make plans and I say yes, and then I don't want to be the one to like back out. out. Yeah. So I, that's like my thing too. Like, since I have it happen to me all the time, I'm like very like touchy about doing it to other people. But I'm like, honestly, I don't even, I don't care to like really go that much this weekend. But I was like, we'll figure something out. But I don't, you know, I don't have a babysitter or anything. So it's like, that's hard to like work around also. Yeah, no, it's so hard. And I use, when I was in my kale was depressed era, I would Mm -hmm. always love to cancel plans or like when other people canceled on me, I was so excited. Yeah. But for the past six months that I'd been like in a happy girl era, I don't want to cancel plans. And I don't really like when people cancel. Yeah, you want to like stick to them because you get excited and you're like, yeah, ready to like do the things now. So it's like, yeah, like I don't want plans canceled. That's kind of how I am in general, because I don't do much anyway. So that's why I'm saying like the time that I spent and like the time that I put away is really important because I plan that out, you know, like I plan to be like, if it's not the kids aren't involved, I've already planned a babysitter and I've already probably planned, you know, if it's a getaway thing, I've planned for my dogs to get sat. Like, so things like that, like it pisses me off when people flake on that. Cause it's like, I already went through all of this, but I do get excited for like plans. Like I like to dress up and go out and have fun and see my friends that I haven't seen in a while. So I'm in that era too, where it's like, if people back out, Sometimes I'm just like, I'm a little upset about it. Like I'm a little salty because I've already planned. This is going to be like a fun thing. I don't really do much stuff that's fun. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) Mm -hmm. aside from like, I want to get away from like the kids stuff every week, like the sports and the the chorus and the the fucking school and (laughs) fundraisers. Like it's driving me crazy. And I'm just like, I'm only have one. So I can imagine how you feel with like all, all your kids in sports. So it's crazy. (laughs) Oh, I'm tonight. I'm just like the kids what, who was it it was either lincoln or lux on the way out of for this morning lincoln was like if i have spanish club until 4 30 and lux has practice at five are we just going to go right from spanish club right to practice and i was mm-hmm. like oh my god you're right and then as soon as their lux and creed's practice is done lincoln has a game at seven so i'm mm-hmm. like oh shit so you're right i have to make sure i have all Everything the fucking to things go before mm-hmm. when i leave at 2 30 to go get um yeah. And then I told Isaac, I'm like, you can't go to homework help because I won't have time to go get you (laughs) between. And then people are like, hey, do you want to go to lunch? Hey, do you want to go to dinner? Absolutely the fuck not. I can't. (laughs) I can't. I do, but I can't. There's no time in the day. Yep. No, I totally, totally feel that. Oh, it's crazy. What is uh, the adult life is ghetto. I said this on my story yesterday. I said this shit is so ghetto. I miss when we didn't have all of this shit to worry about. Like. (laughs) I feel like it wasn't, I feel like it was so simple a couple years ago. Like we were not (laughs) this busy. (laughs) Two years ago, I, all my kids were gone every other weekend, at least every other weekend. The problem with that now is I still have three kids here. And Mm -hmm. so every other weekend I still have, I, there's no, and I also. Now you really don't get a break. Like now. But back then I wanted, two years ago, I wanted people to cancel on me. Now I'm like, I don't want to be canceled. Like don't cancel on me. (laughs) Um, Okay. So down. Down in the DMs. Let's do hey, ladies. Love you both. I have a funny down in the DMs for y'all. So I started working at my mom's factory job when I was 22, and it was a fun job. I worked with not only my mom, but my best friend, too. So it was great. I ended up dating my supervisor. We had to keep it on the down low, and we did a good job of that for a while. We hit it off so great that dick game was strong, and we got really close. <laughs> One day, my best friend and I were outside on break and somebody that also worked there asked if I was dating our supervisor. I said, maybe why? 
There was a group of us outside on break, maybe 15 of us. The guy then proceeded to ask me if I knew about my supervisor and my mom. Oh, I shit. I spit out my drink and go, um, what? He won't give me an answer and tells me he will let my mom answer that. I look around and everyone's dying laughing. I looked at my best guy friend who had been at the job longer than me and I begged him to tell me what he knew. He told me he heard a rumor about them once and I was like, what the fuck? So I text my mom and she responds, LOL, we'll talk later. <gasps> oh my God. No. <laughs> at this point, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I asked my supervisor and he didn't deny it. Mm. I immediately broke it off with him and could never even look at my mom the same again. Ended up becoming something we all joked about eventually, but ew, I was mortified. Anyways, love you, beautiful ladies. I would mm -mm. literally drop everything I was doing and move out of state because Yo, you, if you, you fucked my mom. I'm never going to be that person that is fucking with someone who fucked with my mom. I don't even want to be looked at as that person. Like, Oh, that's such an ick for me. Like, it's just so weird. It's so fucking weird. No. Well, mm -hmm. I guess now would be a good time to bring up the whole, um, yeah. Miley Cyrus, Cyrus Noah Cyrus, Dominic Purcell. Um, I fell in love with Dominic Purcell when he was on prison break. That's who I named Lincoln off of, oh, his okay. character, Lincoln Burroughs. Mm -hmm. Dominic Purcell allegedly was like on and off with Noah Cyrus. Mm -hmm. And then now, now Tish Cyrus is married to him. And that's why there's like this whole like Billy Ray is remarried, Tish mm -hmm. is remarried, but allegedly, and I don't know how true it is, but like, I think Miley ended up walking Tish down the aisle because they got married at Miley's house, but oh Noah God. didn't even go to the wedding. Yeah, because I mean, how fucking awkward is that for her? Like, she's probably like, what the fuck? I don't want to be at this guy that I was fucking. I'm not going to be at his wedding with my mom. Like, what the fuck? But also, do we believe that? Because Noah Cyrus is younger than us and Dominic Purcell is older than us. I was just about to ask how old he is because I know Noah Cyrus is pretty young. Let me look up because I think Noah is like still in her 20s. How old is Noah Cyrus? Yeah, she's fairly young. Noah is 24. Mm -hmm. she's and then young. how old is Dominic? Dominic Purcell is 54. And how long ago was she seeing this guy, Noah? Noah. That's another thing. Because, like, why Dominic. are you fucking with a fucking... <gasps> Multiple mm -hmm. outlets have reported that Noah, 24, and Dominic, 54, so that's 30 fucking years, yeah. were seeing each other romantically before Tish, 56, started a relationship with and subsequently married the Prison Break star in August. And so... I want to know was how there... far back that relationship went, though, because I want to know how old she was. That's what I really want to know. <gasps> Miley Cyrus was fully aware of Noah Cyrus and Dominic Purcell's romance. Mm. That is some crazy shit. See, this is shit that I do not want happening in my family. Like, I... See, I believe E! News. E! News, I feel like, mostly reports the truth. I yeah. Over six months after Tish Cyrus married Dominic Purcell, rumors of a rift between Tish and daughter Noah have surf surfaced. Okay. Let's see where it yeah, says. Yeah, I've heard about the rumors that they're like, they've been more distant and like been arguing about it and stuff. I don't know how much of that is true. But like, when did that happen? Yeah. Like, that's when I mean. were they together is what I want to know. Me too, because that gives me the ick. Like, he was... Okay. Tish revealed Dominic had slid into her DMs in 2016. So that means that Dominic slid in Tish's DMs six years ago. Mm -hmm. So when would... Because six years ago, well, Noah would have only been just been legal. She would have only just been 18. So that like eight years ago? So yes. So then she wouldn't have been legal yet. Mm -mm. So I don't know that if I believe that. Either way, that shit is weird. Like, it's so crazy to me. Like, he's old. Like, why would you fuck with, my, with Noah in the first place? Like, why can't first you all, find someone that's, like, your appropriate age? But then you go for the mom. Like, that's so weird. That's the biggest ick. Could you imagine dating one of, like, Vivi's friends? Like, what? What the fuck? No. Like when they're older, when they're older. I know, but older. like, 
And how would she look at me? Like, she'd be like, like, you're corny as fuck. Like, you can't get a girl. You can't get a man. Like, <laughs> that's how I would feel. I'd be like, ma, like, for real, grow the fuck up. Like, <laughs> grow up. Grow up. Grow up. You like, couldn't marry rich, an 89-year-old yeah, rich man? Go you the could, other way. You could really be out here making it fucking rain. Like, get you someone who's like, oh, my God, I don't know. No, that's crazy to me. I, I can't. Can. I cannot imagine. And I just wouldn't do that to my daughter. Like, I can't imagine. I would never date someone that, like, BB's dated or, like, I I mean, I would. That's, that's like, crazy to me. I wouldn't, even if they never dated, but there were rumors, because people, like I said, people will believe something is true, even if it's mm -hmm. not true, simply for being, for it being public. Yeah, so, like, even if it was talked about or anything, I would stay away from that person as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Like, if you had anything, like, even just, like, a peck, like, y'all hung out for the, y'all hung out together, went to the fucking boat. I don't want nothing to do with that person. Like, I'm just not doing, there's a, there's so many, there's so much men in the world. Like, why there's no reason this for it. one? Like, there's no, no reason. reason for it. None. <laughs> that and on that note, forever. Mm -mm. we hope you love this episode of Baby Mamas. Baby Mamas. We'll be back next week, y'all. See ya.